Hey guys and welcome back to a new awesome video. In this video I will show you how you can use PIP in Android. So that stands for picture in picture mode. And in the end that means that we have our app as a little window. So at least a part of our activity that shows up. For example the YouTube app has that. If you have YouTube Premium I think at least. Um, so that you can yeah just watch the YouTube video and while doing that you can browse through other apps and use them. So a quick demo of what we will build is this. You will see we can launch this here, a video is playing and when we minimize this, then it will basically go into this little window. We can also make this a little bit larger and we can completely remove it here. So that is what I will show you in this video, how you can do this. This is actually pretty simple and let's just dive into it. So I am in an empty Android Studio project right now. We will use Jetpack Compose for this, but if you're using XML, then you can also make use of this. It's Pretty much the same. Um, just yeah, we will actually use an XML view here migrated to Compose because there is no video view for Compose yet. I think the first thing I want to do is want to actually import a video that we will display in our player. So I want to go to our RAS folder. I want to create a new Android resource directory here, which will be a raw directory that is just for raw files, for example, like video files. And what I will do is I will paste a video file here, which I will just call sample. You can choose any video you like, any MP4 file here will work. We're gonna import that, then we're good. Next thing is we wanna go to manifest and actually set that up to support picture in picture mode because our app does not support that by default. And we can only actually add this pip support for a specific activity. So um, each activity can either support it or not support it. So that's why we also need to manipulate this activity tag here by simply going in here and saying uh, supports picture in picture and setting that to true. Next up, we want to go back to main activity and here we want to start to set up our basic UI, which in the end is just a, a single video view. And as I said, video view does not exist for Compose as a composable yet. So we actually need to use the Android view composable to use yeah, a normal Android view as a composable. In the factory, we actually need to create the view, which is simply a video view here. We can use the context that is provided here and pass null for the attributes. And then we can call apply to actually assign a video to this video view and start playing it. We can do this using set video URI. So we can pretty much just provide a URI where we want to play this video from. And how do we now get our MP4 file from our raw resource directory as a video URI? Well, we can use URI.parse to pass a string URI. And the way we need to specify our URI if we get that from Android resources is Android colon slash slash or it's actually Android dot resource colon slash slash followed up by our package name. And that followed up with a slash and the resource ID that we want to get. So R dot raw dot sample. Just like that. Then we can call dot start to yeah, just start the video. And we wanna assign a little modifier to just make sure we fill the whole width with our video. And that's it for now. So that should be enough to actually play the video. So let's now think about when we actually want to show PIP and when we want to go into PIP mode, into picture and picture mode. And we actually want to do that when we minimize the app. So basically when the, when the user leaves our active screen, that could be when they click the home button, that could be when they uh, switch to the recently used apps tab, things like that. And there's actually a function which you usually want to use together with PIP, unless you want to actually launch picture in picture mode after user pressed a button or so, that would also work. But what I want to show you here is on user leave hint. So that is called, yeah, when the user would basically leave our screen and is often used together with picture in picture mode. And first of all, we actually want to check if picture in picture mode is actually supported on our device because on yeah, some devices that might run on a lower RAM amount, it might not be supported. So it's usually a good thing to check that before. Just having a variable here. Is pip supported? By lazy, since we need the package manager to check that and that's not initialized yet if we don't, uh, if we don't use lazy here. And in here we want to say, Package manager 
have system feature and the system feature we want to check is package manager dot feature picture and picture. And here we get a little warning because that requires the um, requires Android NuGet. We can surround this here with this if check. And if we are not running on NuGet, we want to say false. So then picture and picture is definitely not supported. So we can then go back to on user leaf hint, check if pip is not supported. In that case, we simply want to return and else we want to go on with this function. And the simplest way to actually enter picture in picture mode is by just calling enter picture in picture mode. Um, that's just a function that comes from the normal activity in Android. If you are in a fragment, you can also do this by simply, yeah, just saying require activity dot enter picture in picture mode that also works. And here we actually need to pass some parameters. Um, picture in picture parameters. And I will actually write a separate function to create these parameters because then you can easily reuse that to also update these parameters if you want that. So I will say private function updated pip params like this returns picture in picture params nullable. And here we can then return these. So picture in picture params dot builder. We have a normal builder pattern here. And then we can add our options. So let's go through these step by step. Set source rect hint. What is that? So that tells us, or that that tells pip rather, um, our launch bounds, which is a rectangle. And in the end, that is used to just um, have a smooth animation into our pip mode. So if we go back to my device and I relaunch my app, then you will see as soon as I enter pip mode, the video will smoothly animate into the smaller window, as you can see. So there is no, um, it's not really cut off or so. And that is what we can achieve with this set source rect hint by simply providing a rectangle of our view that we want to that, that we want to show in pip mode. So in our case, our video view. How do we get this rectangle? Well, since we're using compose, we want to have a public variable here, video view bounds, which is simply normal Android graphics rectangle. And then when we go down to our modifier, we want to add dot on globally positioned, which is called well, when our composable is positioned, which will give us layout coordinates, which we don't need here. But here we can actually say video view bounds is equal to it dot bounds in window. So we actually do need these. <laughs> um, so yeah, that will simply give us the rectangle around our video view. You can see we get an error here because it tells us we want an Android graphics rect and we got a composed rectangle, but we can simply say to Android rect here. So then we can pass this here, our video view bounds and go on. So set aspect ratio. That is pretty self-explanatory, simply the aspect ratio of our pip window. So we need to provide a rational here, which is simply uh, 16 to 9 in our case. And then set actions. That is something if you also want to provide an action here for your pip window, for example, and for a real video player, you could have an action that the user can uh, play and pause the video directly inside of the pip window. That's usually yeah, just an, uh, a little icon button the user can press. I won't show you how you can actually play and pause the video here, but I will show you how you can actually add an action and how you can receive events when the user clicks these. So that we will simply print a little log statement. And you'll see we need to provide a list of remote actions here, which we can do. List of remote action like this. And here we can then create the remote action. First thing is an icon, which we need to provide for this. We need to import an icon for that. You can go to drawable, right click vector asset. And here we can choose one of our favorite icons. My favorite icon is the baby changing station. Let's choose that. Click next, finish, and provide that here as an icon. So icon.create with resource, provide our application context and the resource ID. Next, we need the title for that, which is for accessibility. So if, if there's, for example, a blind user, then they, um, yeah, that the app could read out loud to them what this uh, icon actually represents or what happens. I will just choose baby changing station here because it really doesn't matter in our case. Same for the description. And we need to provide a pending intent that will be used or that will actually be fired as soon as the user clicks our action. So with that, we can either trigger some code in an activity, in a service 
or a broadcast receiver. And I will choose the latter here. So I will show you how you can create a pending intent that will fire a broadcast receiver in your app and trigger that. So you can execute some code in there. Let's go up, just create a little receiver here. Um, I don't know, my receiver is a broadcast receiver. And here in on receive, when we implement this, let's rename these variables, context and intent. And in here we want to simply say print line uh, clicked on pip action receiver action. No, receiver like this. <laughs> uh, we need to actually register this receiver in our manifest. So let's go there, go inside this above our activity and say receiver my receiver. Just like that. So then our receiver can, can be used and this code will be then called whenever the user clicks on our pip action. So in here, we now need to provide a pending intent that refers to our broadcast receiver. So we can say pending intent dot get broadcast, pass the application context, pass any type of request code not needed here and pass an actual intent that specifies our broadcast receiver. So again, our application context we refer to our my receiver class and you could add some more things like extras here or an action for example if you have multiple icons to differentiate between which one was actually clicked but we don't need that and we want to say pending intent flag immutable because that's needed from i think android level 31 or so and yeah that's it for our action that's how we add an action. You can of course add multiple since you're dealing with a list here, but there is a maximum amount of items you can actually add. So you should check that before. Next thing is what else do we have here? What I didn't talk about yet. Set auto enter enabled. Uh, that would simply mean that you, yeah, the user will automatically enter pip mode even if you just update the parameters here, I think. So even if you don't explicitly call enter picture in picture mode, we don't want that here. And set seamless recess enabled is true by default so that it yeah, just looks better when your pip window actually resizes. We don't want to change that as well. So we can just call build. And we do get a little error here because we actually need to um, check this or run this with a check if we are on Oreo at least. Let's do this. And if we are not an Oreo, we simply want to return null for our parameters because then we don't have any. But yeah, now we have a function that will actually just give us our pip parameters. Let's go to our on user leaf in function to enter picture in picture mode with these parameters. So updated pip params, check if it's not null. And if not, we can actually enter picture in picture mode with these parameters. And we can also add this check here by pressing alt enter and surrounding this else we don't do anything. And that is already it, almost at least. Let's launch this and see what happens. There we go. If we now enter picture in picture mode, let's see. You can see, yeah, it seems to work, but the video actually starts playing again. And if we reopen the app, then it starts to play again. So why is that the case? That happens because as soon as the activity actually goes into pip mode, the size of our window changes, which will cause a configuration change. So we need to specify that we don't want this. And we do this in our manifest for our activity by saying config changes. And here we want to specify some config changes where we don't want the activity to be recreated. That is on the one hand screen size, that is smallest screen size, screen layout and orientation. So for these things, we don't want the activity to be recreated. If we launch this again, then you should now see that this will not kill the activity when we go into pip mode. So it just keeps playing. And if we actually click our little icon here, our action multiple times, then we should see that in our logs. If we go here and we search for clicked, oh, oh that's my emulator. This one here, what did I, yeah clicked on pip action. So that also works perfectly fine to actually, yeah, listen to clicks on these actions in pip mode. So that's a very, very cool feature if you actually have a video calling app, a video playback app or something similar where the user might still 
want to see something uh, of your app but doesn't actually need to directly interact with it apart from these few simple icon buttons that you can actually add in pip mode. So if that video helped you, then I would be very happy if you would actually subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet, because then you will get more videos of these, actually two per week, to actually make you a better Android developer. Apart from that, I wish you a brilliant rest of the week and I will see you back in the next video. Bye bye.